Okay, we are live from Brooklyn, New York, 2022, when the world is still somewhat stable. Um, and uh, but we know we are at the verge of a shift, according to you know. I think anybody who is spiritual, a little bit spiritual, anybody who is a Kabbalist or anybody who knows a bit of Jewish history knows we are about to enter into a new phase I would say um, and a lot of things kind of with society with with what's happening with politics with economy with everything right it's clear that we can feel that 2023 or 5783 uh, for the Jews, um, it's gonna be different, and it should be different because if the process of history is bringing us closer and closer to the end, to Moshiach, to unit, to to the Beis Amigdash, then things have to be moving on, and just like a pregnancy, um, I part from I speak from experience. I have four kids, so. <laughs> but uh, I, I learned from my wife, obviously. Uh, but the contraction gets faster and faster, and as the contraction gets faster and faster, comes a point where you say, uh, Doctor, it's every five seconds, should I come? Well, yeah, <laughs> now is time to come. So we are in a situation nowadays where we have to realize this, we start having more and more contractions, and we are. Um, soon going to be in the delivery room <laughs> with baby Moshiach. I mean, he was, as an adult, obviously. But the idea is that um, we have to feel that way. We have, we should have to feel Meaning, it should be natural that we connect to a world that is becoming like that. Now, let's try to, that's very nice and, you know, romantic or whatever. Spiritual. But the idea is practically how do we connect to that? How do we get ready for a new world? Um, um, the, the, the thing that every Navi says um, and the Gemara says about that we should, the most important thing, while we are in the middle of the contraction, in the middle of the darkness, in the world, middle, middle of World War III, that we, it doesn't mean there's going to be World War III, like we don't know how it's going to happen. But there's gonna be something three until we have the third Beit Hamikdash. Meaning it was first destruction of the temple, second destruction of the temple, and finally the rebuilding of the third temple. But it's gonna be a it was World War One, World War Two, and Gog and Magog. So we are so we don't know which form it's gonna take. We know there was there was supposed to be a plague. It's in the Zohar. It's in the and he said just before Moshe there's going to be a huge plague Corona hey, hint, hint. and then some say there's going to be a plague and a war some say it's just going to be a plague and then it all depends also on us because we can change the situation we still have free choice and we can uh, turn it into what? right and, and, and make, make it uh, something po more positive with, uh, with less pain and struggle. At the end, we're gonna reach to the same point, which is the re revelation of Hashem in the world, and it's up to us to decide which road we're gonna take. We're gonna take this road, or you take this road. It's up to you, right? That's, that's our choice. Um, you know, it's, it's like someone trying to, who has a relationship with someone, and and he's yeah, but you know, uh, I was uh, I didn't feel like I I mean you know no tell me <laughs> you know like sometimes we, 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 we can't be straight in the relations in in the communication right I mean we kind of all struggle sometimes with our parents sometimes with our friends sometimes with our you know spouses and. The truth is, nowadays, we're, we're pushed, say, enough with the excuses. Open up, speak up, especially kids nowadays. 
they won't say, uh, father, mother, you don't want us to do that? Hashem, or Rabbi, you, you gotta give us a good explanation. That's cool, that's good. But you, you, you gotta give us a good explanation. Yeah. Why it's called Andere, right? Because we wanna know why, right? So, uh, Rabbi, you mentioned that sometimes in relationships we do this. Yeah. We, I feel like we only do this when we're scared to tell the truth. When we're, when we're scared. So, are you saying that we're subco- like, as a society we're like scared of Mashiach yeah. to come? Yes, we are very scared because Moshiach is. Imagine, oh, uh, oh, wait. oh yeah, there's a show recently. Uh, uh, I don't advise to watch it, but there are all types of shows. So on, one on Netflix, there's a show called Control Z, I think, something like that. Okay. And it's about uh, uh, teenagers in the school, and they are revealing all the... the there is a hacker that, ha, that, that has enough of all the secret people are having, and all the cheating and the, all the stuff, and they say, I'm gonna tell everyone what everybody is doing. And everybody in the school find out everybody thing, everything about everybody. Everyone. Wow, that's so embarrassing. Okay. The problem is, what do you think heaven is? Everyone's gonna know everything. We're gonna know everything. So, God is giving us a chance. Well then why is that heaven? Listen, don't hurt yourself. You're not allowed to <laughs> to hurt, to punch yourself, it's against Allah. Okay, okay. Joe, be careful. Okay. Thanks for, but thanks he- for feeding us. It's heaven for so the Sadiqim that are like good. That, oh, everyone knows we're good. And it's hell for the, the Shaim. Everyone knows we're bad. Right, but the truth is, uh, you know, most people are not Rishayim, and most people are um, doing bad things because they have themselves in pain, because they never resolve the. the resolve the, the, their issues. Hello. So the idea is that we are pushed today more than ever to open up about our issue. Meaning some people will say to go to therapy. Or some people are pushed to just like, okay, they put in a corner almost that you need to deal with that. And you know, I'm, a, I'm on the side. I'm a marriage coach and counselor. And Guys, he's the best marriage coach ever. Oh, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> How would you know? Just stop it. And and I'm a social worker too. So yeah. I, I I deal with relationship issues all day long. Oh, all day long, but on the regular, almost every day. Um, and I made it my priority to save relationship and marriages because that's the most challenging today. Society and the world we live in today is trying to break the whole family system structure, the whole relationship of a man and a woman and how a man is supposed to act, a woman is supposed to act um, and, and their own greatness. So this, this we, we have been, we are influenced by that and the challenge is to really relearn and redefine what a real man is and what a real woman is. What's the greatness of a man? What's their tendency? How do they act? And same thing with a woman. And until a man will admire the greatness of the woman and the woman will admire the greatness of a man, we're gonna, we're gonna have struggle in our relationship. Because, you know, I always have men and women complaining about the other gender. <laughs> No, it's true. You know, whether it's married or not. Why well, women always like this, always so emotional, so sensitive, say, that's her greatness. Uh, why does she always want me to talk? You know, and well, why she always talk to me? Why? And then the man, the, 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 the woman say, well, man, why, why, why are they so unsensitive? Why can they show love? And why can they show attention? Why, why uh, uh, can he still hold the door after two years? You know, when he used to do it at the beginning, uh, all that stuff. So, the idea is, why is he so macho when he's with his friends, you know? When we were alone, no, he's like, not so macho anymore. There's something called male energy, 
male power, male design, and this something was called female energy, female power, female design. And we need to learn to admire each other instead of saying, no, I want you to be like me, I want to be like you. No, be you, be yourself, and learn to fuse each other and embrace each other with the differences. And we have to learn to live in harmony with those differences. That's the challenge, that, that, that's the beauty. We don't want just to live with the day or just to live with the night. We want both. We want sunset. Anything more beautiful than sunset at Woodstock? Huh? Right? <laughs> you know, I mean, so where the Shabbaton, but right? We want sunset, we want the harmony of the two. So, now, one talking about that, it looks like I'm talking about that too often, no? Am I talking about too often about never relationship? Never, never, never enough. Okay. Yeah, never enough. Okay, never I agree. Um, I agree, I agree also about that. I don't want to <laughs> look imposing, you know. But uh, the truth is, and that's taken from Rabbi Yaakov Weinberg, that's what the Besam is about. Tan, tan, tan. Yes, the Besamik Dash is really all about the relationship that we have between us human beings and therefore with Hashem. It's as if to say, we understand that the Besamik Dash is the house of Hashem, right? That's how we call it, the house of Hashem. Now what's a house? What's happening in a house? Two, en two energies. Two energies. The male and female, what makes a house? A man and a woman, a family, the children and the parents, all that, right? It's uh, interesting that we're talking about this in the month of Av. From all the month, the only one month that speaks about a parent, right? Father, mother. He was speaking God as our father. So that means like somehow we're talk trying to relate to Hashem as our father, like that how we are supposed to have a relationship of father son or father daughter right one of the big cha biggest challenge so that's called Ab? right the mother Abba. yeah, yeah. Abba, Abba. and um, one of the biggest challenge we that we encounter in our Judaism the way we really relate to God is that we only most of the time we only look at God as an authority figure meaning only as uh, a king or I have to do the mitzvot, I have to keep the mitzvot. Do you know what it means being shomer mitzvot? What we call being from? What does it mean to be shomer mitzvot? How would you translate being shomer mitzvot? Somewhere. Or, or. <laughs> <laughs> you're right, you're right. No, but what, what were you going to say? What's the typical thing that people answer? Be observant, yes. I would say Shomer Shabbat. Why would you call it? Keeping, keeping Shabbat. Shabbat. Keeping Shabbat. We keep the mitzvah. The truth is, it's Shomer means to protect and to guard. We're, we're supposed to guard something called mitzvot. And what are mitzvot? The Zohar says mitzvot are here to connect us to God and to connect us to each other. The problem is that very often we look at mitzvot as just commandments. They're not commandments. Do you want your parents to commend you? You want your husband and your wife to commend you? That's the type of love you want to have? I commend you to do the dishes. I commend you to take out the garbage. I commend you to have a baby with me. I commend you. That, that, wow, that's like, doesn't sound like so exciting of a relationship. That's what you want to have with God? And, and if you don't give me a baby, or if you don't do the dishes, and if you do that, you will go to hell. Yeah. Whoa, um, I'm, gone, I'm done with that relationship. <laughs> no, that, that's, that's not what we want to have with God. Who created love, relationship? God. Why do you think God created such a thing as a, a husband and wife and relationship and um, uh, parents and children and all, all the different uh, best friends? siblings, whatever relationship we have that is truly loving. Most of our relationships have nothing to do with commandment, right? Most of our relationship has to do with love relationship on different level, right? 
sometimes physical, sometimes emotional, sometimes intellectual, spiritual. So what, what we are pushed to realize is that I need to learn to have a relationship with God that is not based on just command and authority. Yes, we understand God wants us to, to do that, but he wants us to do that like out of benefit for us, out of the love that he has for us and the love that we can show him, not just to get a point in Olamaba, not just not to go to hell, not just to get credits in my uh, <coughs> cryptocurrency, whatever, in hell. <laughs> God wants us to truly love him, to have a relationship with him. So, what, what, right now we are almost at the end of the nine days, right? We, I, I, I forgot to mention it last time, but basically, why nine days? Why nine? Why not seven? Why not twelve? Tisha mi odea, Tisha mi odea, Tisha. That's right. Nine months of pregnancy, nine days of Av. Because we need during those nine days, by the end of the nine days, to give birth to a new self. Because if the Pesamic Dash is not here today, Chazal says in the Gemara, it's as if we had, if there was the Beis Amidash here, we would have destroyed it again this year. That means we're not being who we are, we're not living the relationship with God that we're supposed to have, and with God and with each other. Therefore, we need to make sure that I need to give birth to a new self. If, if the Beis Amidash is not being rebuilt by the night of Av, I need to give birth to a new self because I cannot continue living the same way in a world where I'm de continuing to destroy the Besa Migdash. And, and obviously we can say it's not me, but all, all, in a way we are all connected. Because if you are not successful, if you're not successful, I'm not successful. Therefore you have to be successful with me. And Rabbi Yaakov Weinberg, and Sal, my Rebbe's fa uh, father, explains that the best thing that represents the fact that we are one united nation and that there's no such a thing as a Jew without the class, without the, the rest of the Jewish people. Meaning that if I have another Jew suffer, right, if someone throw a beer at someone else in the room, it's not nice. And <laughs> We need, we need to support. It's okay, we, I can do therapy with you after. For, Thank you. <laughs> but if, if... I cannot be just in my own world. That's what I'm telling you. You know when you, become, you became Jewish, you, when you convert to Judaism, when you made the decision in the past life to say, I want to be Jewish, I want to be a light to the nation, you made a commitment that from now on, I'm responsible for all of you, you're all my brothers and sisters, and if you're down, I'm going down with you. And if you're up, I'm going to be up with you. It's a home. It's the Beis Amigdash. It would, that's what it represents. So we are all in it together. And if you're suffering, and if you struggle, and if your Judaism is, 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 is you know, in dire straits, if you're not able to connect, then I cannot feel totally connected, right? So the idea is that we need to come to an, a point where after the nine days and through the nine days, I become someone that is more connected with my people and with Hashem directly, okay? What, what, does it, what did it mean to have a Besami Dash? So one, it meant to be all connected to each other, that we're one family, right? And two, that I was able to have a direct connection with God. Now, how do you have a direct connection with God? What does it mean to have a direct connection with God? It sounds very intangible. How do you feel God's love 
Do you ever feel God is hugging you? <laughs> yes, Baruch Hashem. But it's not always so easy. Especially, and, and you feel when he gives you a punch? Oh yeah, oh, yeah, that yeah, right? But we somehow, we, we feel much more the punch than the hug. Sometimes me and Ilya are like doing something and Hashem just like sends us like a gift just to like show him that like, just to show us mm-hmm. that he's on our side. Yes, yes. Like on Pesach or... Like you would have weekly. some billionaire throw like a... Like a bomb kiddush for us, for no reason. Right, right, right. Well, for a reason. But, anyway. I swear, yeah. Um, but, yeah but, but, yes, so, what is the Beis Amidash best known for, besides the, two? I mean, yeah, what is the best known for? What, what, what did we use the Beis Amidash for? Corbanos. Corbanos. How do we do Corbanos today? Davening. What is davening? Is the relation? Say, what, what was the Besamikdash known for? What, was it, what is the main goal of the Besamikdash, right? So we said, what we did do mostly there, the action we did, yeah, we go there to bring Korbanos. But what was the whole point of the Korbanos? The whole point of Korbanos is to speak to God. That's why today, when there's no more Korbanos, we say, your prayers replace the Korbanos. When you brought a cor- why, a cor- why was Corbano so like high and like holy? Because I feel like it's something so like, like a little juicy. Well, do you have dinner when you go on a date? Yeah. Huh. Why that is that so special? Like what? Like actually like. Oh, okay, okay. That, that, that's the whole process. <laughs> Get that on the tape. <laughs> I saw a uh, it's, it's It's the same thing. Right. Just without the fire. Right. No, so, so the, the, the idea is to make you emotional and understand that human life is precious and that sometimes you, in the, in the way you act in the world, with towards another human being or towards Hashem, it's as if you had um, disconnected your life force from someone else. You have a parent or best friend or, or, or a spouse that stop giving love, you feel shechted. You feel there's no more blood and life in me. I want to feel the connection and here you're saying I'm disconnected. And it's interesting that's always here because it's the mind and the heart. That's always the area that is the most disconnected. That's what it symbolizes. Uh, it's one, it has ma- many similarities, but the, one of the main thing, it means that we, the, this, these uh, offerings of gratitude, I bring something, right? The, the, you know in the laws, the, the, are you familiar with the laws of Nida? A little bit? You know what? Okay. So, during the time where the woman is Nida, you are not, uh, the, the way you eat what you eat, Meaning there's a whole thing at the table on how to eat as husband and wife. And how, you know, she has to serve her husband with a shino, you know, directly. And then, then they cannot eat from each other's plate. And they cannot eat from the same uh, bag of chips, you know, or popcorn if you go to the movies. or right? So the so question is, what, wh- why? What, 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 what is Nida has to do with food? Because... What is the first connection of love that you had from the moment you were born? Food, breastfeeding. The first action as a human being in this world, the first experience of love is what? Right, and that's the negative part. <laughs> that's because it's cold in the room. <laughs> but, 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 but it's the baby saying, why am I in this world? What's so good in Gan Eden? That's, that's why he's crying. But, um, I mean, it's, it's uh, usually <laughs> but, <laughs> but the idea is that, no, the first experience of love, of giving, is a, a baby being nursed. It's a food connection. My parents feed me, 
you know, it's like, especially for, for men, this is nothing more important than the food of his mother. <laughs> right? This is sacred, you know. Um, but food makes us feel loved. And that's why almost any date that we have, there's always food involved. Why do you think Jews have food in everything? Every holiday, I mean, besides Yom Kippur and Shara, but every holiday, every date, every shiduch, everything, Beis Amikdash, it's all about food. The Beis Amikdash is a big kitchen. <laughs> a holy kitchen, right? You have health kitchen, and now you have holy kitchen. But the idea is, we... <laughs> That's where we go, but what, what, when we do the offerings, we know, you know you eat that food also. For, for most of the Corbanos, not all of them. For most of them, you eat. But it has to be well done, what you can wear a steak. No, of course, of course. It's, uh, you know, a real barbecue, right? <laughs> like it is there. <laughs> no, but, 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 but the idea is we are uh, experiencing a relationship with God that, um, that, that is similar to the relationship that we have with human being. So it triggers the same emotions and the same connection that we have. Now, um, as we said, what is replace Corbanos today? Oh, so, so, so just to finish the, the thought. So the whole idea of Nida is that because you sh you're very close, you're re in so much in love as a husband and wife, hopefully that's the goal, when you're gonna to come to the table and eat, there's gonna be that super intense connection because we're eating together or we're preparing food for each other. So at that moment, you're in danger of jumping on each other because you're so in love. And that, the food, brings the connection that is stronger than usual. And, you know, because that's, that's what the rabbis were worried. The rabbis were not worried, you know, just, uh, you know, it's, uh, we have to be careful they were worried that they, they wanted us to show us that technically you should be so in love that just if you touch each other or just that if you eat from the same plate, you're gonna jump on each other because you're so in love with each other. Today it's like, what does he do if from the same plate, from the same bag of chips, uh, you know, it's a, you just touch each, you touch each other, right? You know, it's nothing special, but that's, that's very sad. Or you have the guys that come and say, um, yeah, Rabbi, um, you know, the Nida Rose is no problem for me. It's very easy. Uh, say, it's easy? That's so sad. You don't want to jump on your husband or on your wife? You don't want to touch each other? You don't want to make love? That, what type of relationship you have? Right? Judaism doesn't want you a relationship just of love. Judaism wants... Hashem wants you to be passionate lovers with your partner and with Hashem himself. Why was the Besamikdash destroyed? Mitzvah Sanashim Minumada. Doing, having a relationship out of road. Doing the mitzvah out of road. There's no meaning, there's no feeling, there's no passion, there's no energy. Hashem said, I want you to be like crazy about me. I want you to talk to me. I want you to, to be like sparks. Wait, Rabbi. I want you to run to shul. I want you to want to put feeling all day. I want you to, you know, just tell everyone God loves you. Yeah. Oh, because the idea is that during Nida there's a whole thing just about food, laws about food, which seems like it's out of place. What's the connection between uh, a food and, lo and love between two people? Right, right. So, so in the Besamikdash, there's also a whole thing of food because food is something that connects two people together. That's the power of eating a meal together or going to drink together. Right, so that's what that's one of the reasons why we use that in order to have a relationship with God, because it's a sign of love. When I eat a korban in the besamikdash, I I'm eating dinner with God. If I'm a very romantic, like a French man, I put two candles and a French wine, uh -huh, and it's very romantic with Hashem. Right, that's what we do every Shabbat. You don't understand that Hashem is very French. 
<laughs> I mean, when I, I hear Hashem speak to me, he has a French accent. I'm telling you. I mean, he created the French for a reason. <laughs> God is very romantic. And, 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 and it, he created the world that way because he wants us to use those qualities and those, those gifts. So, um, so we, Hashem wants you to fall in love with him and he wants you to have a deep relationship with him. As deep, if not deeper, than the relationship between a husband and a wife. Even the relationship of a husband and wife is for us to try to have a relationship with God himself of that, on that level. Here we have a lot of uh, pasta corbanos to increase the love between each other. <laughs> In the house of Hashem, the big house of Hashem. Wow. <laughs> right? Okay, it's, it's, it's a house of love here. We feed you all the truth. So, so how, how do we increase that love? How would you rebuild the Mesamikdash? How would you rebuild that house? We, we need to, so with Hashem directly, we need to learn how to down in a way that it's real, in a way that is passionate, in a way that is emotional, and we almost all struggle with that. When you pray, do you speak to Hashem in the same way you speak to a human being? For me, it's the most outrageous thing. I mean, again, I'm sometimes guilty of it because it's, it's not easy to be always on that level. But is it? You know, who speaks like that to someone else? By the way, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I want to, uh, I want to thank you very for the past. Thank you. What? <laughs> I'm just thanking you for the past. No, but I'm very shocked when you go. I'm guilty. I dominant in the car while I was driving. Oh, <laughs> it has happened to me also sometimes. You know, even even as a rabbi, it has happened to. But it, it's we all we all struggle with having an authentic, real relation with Hashem. Is Hashem real or not? If He's real, you will not talk to Him like that. Um, you you will. So, 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 so imagine, you know, I come and I come to my wife and say, Darling, if you <laughs> want to know, or like, like, uh, how, how, how do we do it? Um, you know, yes? Right, it's better. Saying, absolutely. Yes, I know I'm they are... I would like the Hebrew, and there are things that I'm saying. That no that's, that's, that's correct, and I push people because they, they's a, we have an inner fear and of, of we are so used to do, to want to do the right thing. And do you know, according to Halakha, according to Mishnah, Buran, the Shulchan Aruch, and basically all the big parts came, if you pray, Shmone Esre, Birkat Amazon, all the brachot in English, you're completely yotze your mitzvah. Yes. That's how we pass it. It's halakha black and white. If you daven in English, you mean knowing what you say. Knowing what you say, but say it in the language you understand. But if I speak a prayer, you read it in Hebrew and it explains in English on the next page. Well, that too. But they, they're not saying that. They're saying that if you pray your davening in the language, in your own mamelashon, right? In your own language, in English, in, 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 in Spanish, in French, you are yotze, your davening. So art not good then? 
No, at school is good. But at too high of English for us. Oh, oh no, so, so, yeah, so sometimes it's in the, the English you don't understand, right? I thought that, like, they, I thought that Hazal set up the dominant that even if you don't understand it, if you read the Hebrew words, you're Yotzev for Kabbalistic things. So, so yes, there is this union of that when, what you say has still an impact, but if you say it with boredom, with not not with joy, you say it at a, at, at, a, at a speed that doesn't allow you even to have any emotions for what but you say. But the, the, the words themselves were imbued with like a Kabbalistic... Yeah, but it's not enough if there's no emotions. Right. Wow, that was a powerful video. Okay, you, you have to understand. You have to understand that the 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 Shulchan Aruch says better a few words with emotions, with with, with understanding I and emotions, hear, than many words. That's how we pass it. That's how that. Because your wife, rather you say, I love you, than say a thousand times, I love you, 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 I love you. I love you. How real is it? How real is a relationship? So what we're saying is that when we pray to Hashem, we need to make Hashem become more and more real. You know, um, um, and, 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 and very often you're going to see the Chazan who just reads, and he's reading the book. He's not talking to anyone, right? And I always push people to, to, to train themselves to, um, you know, when they daven, to try to speak the davening in the way that <coughs> that that it makes sense with, with the words. With the, do we have a seat over here? Rabbi, would you say it's better to not be on pace with your minion and know what you're saying than to rush and be on pace with them? Uh, 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 and at the, at the, <laughs> Sorry? It, yeah, I think I think it's you you we need to grow. I, there was a time where I would say Baruch Ata and by the time they finish you know Shmon I didn't start Shema yet you know? <laughs> <laughs> so but yeah. I gra gradually now I, I can daven faster than flash yeah, so we right. talk to your wife you don't talk slow you talk normal right right so so you, you, you try um, so let, let, me, let me show you an example uh, do uh, Really, the speed doesn't matter as long as you have meaning and emotion tied to it. So, right, so let's take the first bracha of Shimon Sure. right? So, typically is Okay, that would be a typical uh, davening in most show, right? But what if you say things as if you're really talking to God? In the, and I, I read it in English. Blessed are you, Hashem, our God, and God of our fathers, God of Abraham, God of Yitzchak, and God of Yaakov, the great, the mighty, and the awesome God, exalted God, who bestows good kindness. He possesses everything and recalls the kindness of the patriarchs and brings the Redeemer to their children's children for his name's sake with love. King, helper, savior, and a shield. Blessed are you, Hashem, shield of Abraham. Completely different. And now you say that in Hebrew, Baruch Ata Hashem. Elokeinu, Beloke Avotenu. Eloke Abraham, Eloke Yitzchak, Beloke Yaakov. Ha'el, Ha'gadol, Ha'gibor, Ve'anora, El Elyon, Gomer Chasadim Tovim, Ve'konei Ha'kol, Ve'zochei Chasdei Avot, Ve'mevi Goel Ibn Adam, Le'man Shemo, Ve'ahava. Melech, Ozer, Ve'moshia, Ve'magen. Baruch Ata Hashem, Magen Abraham. I'm talking to someone. The other one, I'm just reading from the book. How real is your relationship with Hashem? It ha we have to... So the Beis Amikdash was the place where it was tangible. That relationship with God was tangible. You could feel it. People would go there and have prophecy. They have, would have a direct way to Hashem. So having the Beis, Beis Amikdash destroyed means that we haven't yet gone back to that relation with God. 
we treat God just like a, a dictator who just wants commandment to be done and, and if you don't do it, you go to hell. God is not interested in a relationship like that. There's, nobody wants to go in a marriage where if you do something wrong, you go to hell, you go out of my house, go sleep on the on bench outside. That's it's not nice. <laughs> well, yeah, it's not a loving relationship. Right? So we have, and imagine, imagine, okay? Imagine all the people, no. Uh, imagine that you will speak to Hashem and daven to Hashem the same way when you tell a secret in the ear of your best friend or someone you love. Imagine, that's Shmona Yisrael. Sometimes I imagine a big ear for Hashem. Like, hey. <laughs> <laughs> the big like, You know, like a baby is feeding I, I can't unsee that. <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> so. <laughs> no, but Photoshop a big ear. No, go shopping for a big ear. No, after they share that. Uh, no, but one of the reasons why you, you know Chaza said to use the kotel, wh why we're told to speak in front of, 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 of a wall, and we do that, that by the kotel, uh, why we're told to go in front of a wall? Because when you're in front of a wall, you feel uh, something, something physical, something real, right? And you're supposed to think that this, this is Hashem's presence. Because the real Shivisi Hashem is with me. I'm supposed to try to feel that Hashem is really here, and guess what? He's, he's everywhere. By the kotel, it's in the shrina in, in the wall. So, so, so the idea is, can I start a life where I'm treating Hashem like real? God is more real than human beings. He's behind all of us. It's a little king, right? That, that's the, the way I uh, always give the example. When is Hashem giving you a hug? Where don't you ever have your best friend or your spouse or your sibling or your parents give you a big hug where, where do you think that love comes from yeah it comes from them but ultimately it's Hashem saying hey I love you and I cannot open the sky and say here come give me a hug because that will be a bit scary and not just scary but it'll be the end of free choice because <laughs> if Hashem comes to give me a hug like that that's it you know I'm I have Emuna 100%. I'm super cool. Me and God, we hug all the time. So there will be no more tests for me because that's if you're in Gan Eden. But if I understand that Hashem acts through nature. That's going to be the new. <laughs> Reveal the Besamidash. Speak and do the big ear. <laughs> you know, that, that, that's cool. But. <laughs> Well, how big do you think Hashem is? Well, it's just this big. No, but... I'm like this. Okay. I'm Sorry. <laughs> so, so the... the um, what were we saying? <laughs> God is wrong by this. Right? Yeah. Hashem it, it gives you... A, when someone else gives you a hug, it's Hashem really giving you that hug. Because Hashem has to hide through nature. That's why the word Elohim is... Uh, the same gematria as Hateva, the nature, because Hashem has to act towards us in nature. All the ten plagues of Egypt, it looked like it was natural, right? I mean, with nature. But that was made on purpose for us to always have that doubt with Pharaoh. Oh, it's a coincidence. Oh, it's a coincidence. It's a coincidence that you're getting a hug from someone who loves you? No. And you have to feel that's Hashem showing you love. You say, I don't see Hashem loving me. You know, I have all this problem, this problem, this problem. But when you take a shower in the morning, does it feel good? When you eat a good, nice uh, macaroni and, and uh, Spanish tomatoes or whatever, when you get a nice smell of ice flowing through your French uh, neck, <laughs> you know, <laughs> that's, that's a lot of pleasure, or, or, or vodka through your Russian pipes, 
this is there's no greater pleasure than that, right? And he said, if that's not love, God loves me. All those pleasures, you know, if you go outside in a, in, in a sunny day and you get wind in your hair, if you have hair, uh, then you see this is a pleasure I lost, but I count on you to get it for me. But the, the, maybe I should get a shade off, no. But the idea is that it feels good. When you drink a cold water in a very hot day, it's, it's like you, you almost want to faint because it's, it's so pleasurable, right? I mean, I mean <laughs> we, 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 food, food, we get so much pleasure out of food that, that sometimes we, we can control ourselves. People want jump on cheeseburger and they say, ah, I can't anymore, cheeseburger. It also shocks your What? It also shocks your heart. <laughs> well, yeah, it's, it's unhealthy. But, but, but some people will struggle with food because why is food preventing you from serving God? Uh, it's so good. Yeah, because you experience love when you eat food. This is very strong pleasure. People sometimes even get overweight. Has happened to me, even though, even though I'm a French man. Right? It's, it's terrible, but because it's connected to, to, to love. Do you, do you realize that we, there's food everywhere here, you know? What, do, do you realize that we eat all the time? Why do you think we eat all the time? Why does Hashem want you even to eat in the first place? You could just sniff the air and then be happy. Yeah. I'm full. Is that all you're smoking on that? Yes, the air of the Nisham also. So, yeah. Why? Oh, so, I got your back. <laughs> thank you. So, we, 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 we sniff the, just the air, and that could be our food. And Moshe Rabbeinu lived 40 days and 40 nights in top of Arsenal without eating or drinking. Right? So technically, I don't need that. But Hashem wants us to feel tangible, physical pleasure. And, and, and understand that, hey, I want you to feel my love. When you eat, when you experience any pleasure in this world, physical, emotional, intellectual, spiritual pleasure, it's all here for you to understand that it's, it's I love you, and I want you to experience it. Yes. Can we go around the room and, and uh, uh, each person say something that they uh, feel that they um, experience from Hashem, like some, some pleasure that they experience from Hashem? Absolutely. Give, uh, great, great idea. Like what type of hug do you get from Hashem? I get to live with Joe Perusi. Oh! Meow! I get to serve Ilya naked when, I'm, when he's in bed. Oh, 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 oh. Uh, PG, uh, PG-13. PG-13. Serve food. 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 Cross. They, they, they might be children watching. Okay. No, it's, it's uh, not for children. But um, yeah, anybody feels any hugs from Hashem? We'll do one by one. One by one. Any? Uh, um, when do you feel a hug from Hashem? Okay, it's very random. I get to be the first one. Um, so I went to Prospect Bar today with some friends, and we uh-huh. sat in like where the trees are, with the birds, and it felt really cool to be in the forest, but like also in the middle of Brooklyn. Mm-hmm. So, uh, definitely felt the hug from the Beautiful. Well, God loves you, man. I, uh, I was really tired today, and I took a 15 minute nap, and that just repowered me, and I felt like that was a little hug. Beautiful. That's what Joe saw. He got jealous. Okay. I, had, I had a bunch of tickets that came on my car from like seven years before, and they hit me with it, and they didn't know how to pay it. And then I won a Super Bowl raffle, and it was the exact amount of money. What? Like a day later. Wow. Exact Super amount of money Bowl? to the penny. Wow, that's real love. That's crazy. Wow, that's, that's intense. I was like, whoa. That should be like a story. That, that's mm-hmm. right. It's, it's, it's a little more detailed because it came, the raffle came because of the car, so it was even better. Uh-huh. But that would be like a 10 minute story, so okay. I can't say it right okay, now. Okay. No, but you put it on the, make a video. It could be in a book. Okay, yeah. make a book. Video. I'll read it. Uh, some of the best hugs that I feel is when everything that I'm working really, really, really hard for uh, goes wrong. For example, like last, last, uh, last Pesach, we did a Pesach program, and every single thing was going wrong. Everything. Mm. Our hotel, uh, the amount of people, money-wise, food, our truck broke down, 
everything was just going wrong. Storage for food, everything. And then not only does Hashem like figure out the, the problem, he also like adds more like shefa to the to the situation. So he like slapped me with like like ten thousand dollars worth of like free meat and food from the fighting hotel and just made the best piece of for him ever. So like that's like a huge hug for my chef. And I heard you have in the French man you call yeah, it. French <laughs> rabbi. Wow. You're so lucky. That, that's real luck. When you rabbi. have a French rabbi send to you like that, it's <laughs> straight from heaven. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. When do you feel happy? You feel how much I don't think it's anything specific. I feel like it's when I wake up in the morning. I like, I don't know, it's so peaceful. And like, I really, I think that's, that might be why I have so much, it's a hard to sleep in. Because when I wake up, I like, feel so peaceful and like spiritual. And, like, I feel grumpy. I don't know. Yeah, it's just like, <laughs> no, that, 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 no, that's just well, so like, have. if I overcome the Yatsahara of like being tired and like not wanting to wake up, if I yeah. actually wake up, it's just really nice. I don't know. No, that, that's I guess great. That's what I feel like. No, it's like you know, it, 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 the feeling of a baby in the arms of the mother. You know, when you when you fall in love, one of the kavanah you have when you daven and do the three step in Shemone Esri is that you go in your father's or mother's arm like that. Say, Daddy, can you buy me a lollipop or whatever? <laughs> <laughs> you know, or, or you know, or you just want to be there with Hashem. So you make the three steps and you're like that. Well, the different way people stand. I stand with my hands, that's the Shukana who says. According to Kabbalah, you put your right hand on top of your left hand and put it on, on your heart. So you stand like that. Um, chesed over time. Right, Chesed over time. When do you wow. and, What? How do you hold the seed? Oh, I know, I do it by heart. The Shmone say I do it by heart. Or, if you're very crafty like me, yeah. it took me years. Pro training. Pro tips from the Black tray belt. Black Garto. <laughs> Don't miss, okay? <laughs> so, um, but, but yeah, you, you imagine sometimes, yeah, you do the, the, those three steps and you imagine how you want to be connected to Hashem. You want Hashem to, you want to feel in, the, in your arms of your father, in the arms of your mother, in the arms of your loved one, arms of your best friend, right? So how do you imagine Hashem at that moment? Or sometimes you can imagine Hashem is your therapist and you're coming and God, I have a lot to tell you. I have a lot of problems in my life. And he says, Hashem says, Give, tell me all your problems. I will take care of it. Yes? So that that's fantastic. That's exactly you 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 get the the gift of feeling what it is that um, what is that Hashem gives you as a gift, that, His gift, so to speak, right? Of of emulating God, giving life to others, uh, and that's that's beautiful. That's that's great to feel it by giving. That's that's very special. Keep it up. Keep getting those hugs. Uh, Yes. What's your name again? My what? name is Rachel. Rachel, Rachel. Um, I feel like <laughs> Hashem hugged me with my health. Mm -hmm. um, I was really unwell for like two years and um, I'm doing better. So you don't realize like how much your health mm -hmm. plays a role in your everyday life until it's taken from you. So I kind of feel like he gave me like a new lease on life. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. <laughs> that, that yeah. one big hug okay. that keeps... <laughs> That's, that's very fair. By the way, you, you, you know, one of the most beautiful and powerful bracha is the Afebatum bracha, right? And people don't realize that. It's, for me, it's the most, it's almost the most intimate bracha. What are you saying? You're saying, thank you, God, that I went to the bathroom because, why? Galui v'yadua livne kisei kevodecha. It is known and revealed in front of your kise akavod that I'm sitting in the bathroom 
everybody knows about me being in the bed hakise from the lowest point on earth of doing my uh, my thing my most animalistic shameful thing even this is known in front of the Kisi Akavod and Hashem is making sure that everything works well and, and, and almost like a parent who after the baby goes to the potty say have you made everything is good How, right so that, that's how Hashem is taking care of us every part even the most intimate and shameful thing he's taking care of us so that's a bracha of of of, of love of tremendous awareness that everything that's happening in my body Hashem is actively allowing your white cells and your red cells to flow and your your oxygen to, to, to go and to breathe without even thinking and your heart to beat what, what decide, makes you decide that your heart should beat when you sleep? who, who, do you, who do you decide? oh because Hashem turns the battery like that on and then it goes until 120? No, Hashem, you're, you're, we're all like plugged in, like in the Matrix. We're all plugged in into the wall, and we have, which is plugged in into, directly to Hashem, our soul. And if Hashem unplug you, 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 your body shuts down. Right? That, that's really, so you, you're just a piece of meat. Uh, maybe a nice French piece of meat, or. Uh, Party or Ashkenaz or Russian piece of me that doesn't matter or Syrian or Persian but, <laughs> but 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 at the end it's nothing without the constant energy every second is the energy that God gives you so oh we didn't finish the, the tour so thank you that, that was a beautiful uh, hug thank you. thank you for sharing yeah I mean this is a small example I'm saying I feel a lot it's nothing small yeah right so yesterday I was my mother asked me to take the garbage probably get, I, I need to move my car, but I had to do it in the morning for alternate sides. And I thought, oh, I'll probably take it down and find a spot. And I like, did. I didn't have to wake up early. So mm. I was like, oh. That's a high conversation. Like, yeah. No, that, that's beautiful. It's taking the most natural, physical, natural, um, I would say, mundane, mundane things of nature it's of yeah. every day and understanding that even those most natural, simple things are actually part of Hashem's right. Hashgaha practice. I had like wishful thinking, I was like, ooh, I might find a spot now. I took like, he stands, I was like, oh, look at that. That's good, Baruch Hashem, it's your intuition. You know, it's the Bina Yisera. Beautiful, thank you. It's like a Syrian hug, okay, now, <laughs> Temani. You realize like how many things you have going on in your life and how everything is orchestrated and just like, everything like falls into place and sorts out and you're like, a human being can't be doing it, like you see, like you just see Hashem and everything. Yes, beautiful. That's 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 beautiful. Seeing the whole Ashka Chapratis and Ashka Chakralit, everything happening, and and seeing that Hashem, you have everything prepared for me. That's yeah. like when you have like big events or like stressful things, and just like everything slowly just like falls into place, and you're like, wow. Awesome. Like I can do that's that. That's <laughs> yes, yes. No, that's, that's true. That's awesome. It's the greatest um, or ma maestro of the orchestra. Yeah. Is Hashem. A Temani hug. Okay. <laughs> Russian hug. Yeah. Um, for me, um, it's any time I spend like quality time with somebody. Quality like, time with family or friends. Oh, like, just, that's great. Like, that's fantastic. Yeah. Yes. And, and again, all this is um, hug Hashem back when you feel that. You know, say thank you Hashem for that love. You know, I, I, I'm, I'm with you. You know, this, this is the way we do it. Um, hold on. All right. We'll, we'll, we'll skip you, but I'll come back to you. Think of something. Yeah. <laughs> so I think um, on Friday night, first of all, like having the Shabbat meal and also going to sleep, there's something about like the feeling of like just being stuck. <laughs> Maybe part of the way I say Shabbat. Being in like Hashem's hands and like. <laughs> no, no, they, they, they're doing it on purpose. Go, 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 go. No, but there's something about you that to me that like, really feels like a hug. Uh -huh. Like I really am loving it. Like, what? It's just like, 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 it's just like,
Because I've been lately, the last like couple months, I don't want to back the edge, and I'm like, it's almost over already, like I just want to hold on to it. Absolutely, you know, that, that's why uh, by Hasidim, they try to keep it longer and longer until uh, till Tuesday. But, <laughs> you know, but they, 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 they till the night, they go on and on. But yeah, that's, Shabbat is definitely a hug for Hashem, if you can explain it like that. Yes, like a, a hug in time, you know. Yes, yes, beautiful. It's it. I'm not, I'm not going to talk anymore, I'm just saying. No, don't, <laughs> don't, don't, don't feel threatened by, by okay, these, those male energies. If she wanted, she wanted, she would have come. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Hashem. <laughs> <laughs> yes. yes. How do you guys say Hashem? Hashem. Oh, that's great. Yes. Yes. You guys say Torah, I say Torah. You definitely have the biggest Syrian accent of the three Syrians here. It's beautiful. It's great. I love the accent. I'm very thankful for... Uh, One, Connection there? Yeah. Okay, beautiful. All right. Hey, how are you? We're sharing uh, the hugs we had in God from Hashem. Sorry? We, we are sharing the hug we had from Hashem. Um, expressing the love relationship we're having. Um, um, what's, what's your name? What's your name? <laughs> Naomi, hi Naomi. Um, Shh. Everybody deserves to express this hug. Okay. When you expect something like that to happen, then like, it up happening. Oh, so you feel like uh, like uh, Hashem protect you at that moment and then you feel her. Okay, beautiful. That's an excellent uh, example. Um, outdoors, going outdoors. Every time it was indoors. <laughs> Being outdoors in nature. Nature. Um, whether it's snowboarding the snow or it's uh, like literally being in the outside and camping or even at work when I'm outside on the hard rides looking at the view, the beautiful view of the views. That's, that's, a, that's, that's yes, a great scene. example. Just, you know, why do you think it has been pre programmed in your mind that when you see an amazing landscape, you go, wow, and you start feeling something unique? Like, why? Did you ever see a scroll going like that? Oh. No. I believe they do sometimes. <laughs> no, that, that, that's if they came to eat from no, your no, grinding no. Uh, green... Okay. I think animals can <laughs> stop and appreciate nature all the time. I think they appreciate nature way more than us. Because they learn how to utilize it. Yeah, but I don't, think, I don't think they're conscious about it, even though it's, it might be true. So, it's Hashem... Hashem created... Uh, a, a, a system where we can appreciate beauty and we can appreciate pleasure and we can appreciate music and things like that because it's one of the way we can receive and feel that that love and that see the awesomeness of Hashem um, for us to be for it to be tangible. Um, Ilya, did you share already? Oh yeah, you shared. Oh, so our two. Uh, New guest, this is a hug from Hashem that you come to us at this moment. It's thank you so much. You're welcome. Um, we're, we're just sharing moments where we feel Hashem, it's like Hashem hugging us because the idea of the Besamikdash is that we have to make the relationship real, like as real as with a human being, right? Because Hashem is even more real than human being, and and even sometimes 
when you have someone telling you something, we know David Amelech once on, on the level where someone, when someone cursed at him and gave him tochacha or whatever, he, he was supposed to say, oh, no, don't kill him. Hashem, I have to learn from something. Hashem is talking to me. I have to listen to the message. Doesn't mean if everything is true, but some of it is true. So on the highest level, when someone talks to me, it's Hashem talking to me through those people. Right? After you choose what to listen to, you know. But isn't it also when anything happens to you? That's only if you're truly on that level. Uh, true. <laughs> yeah, but if we truly believe that God was involved with everything and he was here, that God was here, you know, I might have maybe not say certain jokes or maybe dressed a little bit differently, uh, you know, I will have put my, uh, my French uh, top jacket or... or uh, well, it's an acknowledgement and understanding. Right. It's, 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 acknowledge the existence of God and not really understand whatever it is. Yeah, yeah, so it's, it's gradual. We all try to get there, but as the Rambam says, the more you become, it becomes a, a, a reality that God is here, the more God shows that he's here. Right, that, that's, uh, that, 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 that's the idea. Can I, can I say something? Of course. I feel like, um, for me, I know you say that not to always say, like, I'm going to like what you just said, but to me, I feel like that really connects my, I mean, um, makes my connection with Ashraf that much greater. Because when I think, like, maybe everything's happening, it's happening for a reason, and I feel like it's bad, or, you know, things didn't go as planned. Right. It's all for the best. Right, right. Better. So, again, the, you, you can say Gamzu, you're why, why can't you say Gamzu No, I say you, you could say Gamzu Why shouldn't you? The, the, the danger, the danger of just starting with saying Gamzu is that if you say, uh, if someone just passed away and say Gamzu it might work maybe for you, but for the people around you, they're going to think you are you're crazy. disgusting. Okay, so right. you're, so, so, so you're not be insensitive, but you could think, that, oh, that, everything's for the best. That's, you're right. Yes, so that's different. For oh. Because it's different as saying, this is good. The challenge of Gamzu Tuba is saying, this is good, right? Or, or some, you, 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 um, you cannot go to someone with suffering and tell him, oh, but it's good for you, it's good for you. You can't do that. But really, it is. No, but I do. Okay, you can't be but 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 that's still my question. You have to be. Yeah, you have to. You you have to be on the level. Meaning, meaning, if if it's something that ends up to be something positive for you and it works, then it's hundred percent fine. For a lot of people, it doesn't work. They say Gamzu Retova, but inside they're raging, they're furious, they're hurt, and then then that, then that's great. Then you should use it. But it, it's not everybody is on your mind though. Even I remember like learning in like high school that any like um, any like bad thing that happens to you is really all the best. So let's say I go into my pocket and I grab a penny instead of a quarter, mm -hmm. then that is also for my best and have to know that Hashem has my best interest, you know? Right, right. Yes, yes, yes. That that's that's a tremendous level of closeness to Hashem to to feel that way. Um, it, it, it just sometimes there are moments of of yeah. darkness where we have to be authentic and I cannot say, you know, if, 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 the, if the kids are home and the parents don't have money to pay the bills and they have very little food and, and, and the parents are shouting and, uh, at each other and, and, and screaming and telling the kids to, you know, in, a, in a negative emotions and they say, that's, that, that doesn't fit, that doesn't match. The, the kids are saying, that's not bitachon, that's not gamzul etola. Why are you angry, why are you upset, why are you sad, why are you scared, doesn't fit. So we have to be authentic. So, so sometimes we have to be careful to, uh, about that. Okay, so just to conclude, um, the idea of the rebuilding of the Besamikdash and all that, we have to understand that, um, um, <laughs> the, 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 idea, the idea is how are we going to rebuild the temple? We, as a Jewish people, we're sick. We're sick and we're not in love and we don't treat each other as brothers and sisters. I mean, 
brothers and sisters literally. That means if I have my friend who is suffering, right, I'm there for them like it's my own brother. If I have a sister who is suffering, I'll be there for like my sisters. But we don't, we go, we walk in the street, we don't even say hi to each other. Oh, that's his problem. Oh, that's his thing. Oh, look, this guy, he has a nice car. I'm jealous. How, what did he do to get that? He probably did that, that. We're not happy for each other. We're not suffering for each other. One of the big things that the Navi says, what does the Navi say? The Navi says that uh, uh, Hashem doesn't care about your Shabbat, about your mitzvot, about your dad. You know what he wants really? Is that you care for the destitute, you care for the orphan, you care for the widow, and you care for the people who are alone, who are suffering, who are abused. That's what Hashem wants. That's what we need to do. But how many of us, you know, I mean, not you guys, but how many actually people care and go out of their way to support the orphan, to support the widow, to support the, the divorcee, the woman who is alone with her kids, the, 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 the you know, the, all the problems, the people who have cancer, Any, anybody who is suffering in the Jewish world, okay? Why are they not in our prayer? One of the things that I encourage everybody to do, um, I started that a few years ago, in my, I try in every one of my prayer, at least, at least one Shemone a day, to always mention the orphan, the widow, the destitute, that Hashem should take care of them, that if I have an opportunity, you know, that I should be able to care for them and pray for them to not be alone, to not be hurt. Thank you. Um, and and uh, see, he cares for me because I was alone without water. Okay, but that, that, that love. Thank you, brother. Um, and I say brother, even though he's 40, I'm a, I'm a Shiraz. You see the love. That was Hashem hugging you. Right? Persian to Persia to Poland. <laughs> so it's a huge, it's a huge gap. But that's really what we, we need to, to create. We create a people who are unified, a people who is a true, real family. Where when I, I, I see another Jew, I don't think of him as just a stranger. He's my brother and sisters. And he works, but very often, oh, he's Hasidish. Oh, the, the Litvish are like that. Oh, the Yeshivish are like that. Oh, the Yeki. Oh, the Sfarim. Oh, the Ashkenaz. Oh, this type of Hasidus and this type of Hasidus. Oh, he's... You know, he has a kippah velvet. Oh, he has a kippah shuga. Oh, he has no kippah. Who cares? It's your family. We have to learn to get along with each other. Sinat chinam is, I don't like you because you're different. No, no, no he, puts, uh, he puts the blue on his tzitzit. Uh, this uh, breast love. It's a uh, half cook. Uh. That's, that's not love. That's not understanding that it's your family. If your own children, if your own parents, are different than you, that's fine. It's your own blood and flesh, it's your family. We need to respect each other, all the other goods. We need, what was the big thing with the Jewish people, with Yosef, they sold Yosef. Oh, because he's different, he has a coat of color. So who cares? He's your brother. And how much suffering we have because of that whole selling of Yosef. And the whole thing is to be the Jewish people, 12 nations, 12 tribes with 12 different approaches. It says that all 12 had 12 different ways how to do the 12 different sidur, 12 different gates of prayer. But they were all united. When we say Shema, everyone says the same Shema. We're all um, uh, connected. So that's, if we can come out of this Tisha B'Av with uh, practical ways and ideas on how to be more, to make another Jew more like my family, my immediate family, then you're already you're rebuilding the temple. And you have to increase that with all the relationship, the people you don't like, the groups you don't like, the things you like. No. And after that, says Rav Cook, then you have to do the same with the non-Jews too. Because what does the Navi say? He said, the house, the Beis Amikdash, Beis Tfilati, Beit Filati is going to be my house of prayer. It's going to be Beit Kol Hamim. It's going to have a prayer for all the people, meaning that we're going to have to get along and become a big family with the entire world. That means that I have to learn also 
to love and to respect and to support the non-Jews. They also, you brothers and sisters, guess what? They were also part of Adam Arishon. We all come, we're all brothers and sisters, or cousins, whatever, mm -hmm. right? We're all connected, but first you work with your closest brothers and sisters, and then you expand. But until humanity understands that we're one big Adam, we're one big humanity, we're all one big family, we, we won't be able to go back home. Because that's what the home represents. You go back home when you all feel like you're part of that home, right? So that's a bit what we need to rebuild. And you know, try when you walk in the street, say, hey, brother, hey, sister, hey, bro, hey, sis. But then you're rebuilding the temple because you become, you become, uh, 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 you make everybody your family. That's really what, what is the world that we're waiting for. When Moshiach will be here, we all feel that we're part of the same team, of the same family, one uni united thing. So, Bezat Hashem, you should have the last Tisha B'Av of your life. Amen. And next year, <laughs> next, next year, it's going to be in the Besamikdash, all together, my brothers and sisters, dancing and happy, like yeah, a, it'd be a Yom Tov. And see, you'll be there doing the music. Big ear. Right, and, and, and then big ear. Don't forget the big ear. When you talk to Hashem, <laughs> you, you will be shipped a uh, big uh, ear uh, and uh, through Amazon. Do you have Amazon ears? We'll make them. But we need a nice Jewish ear. You know? What's a Jewish ear? I don't know. Pants? No. What, what's a <laughs> ear with pants? <laughs> That's interesting. <laughs> no, but again, it's 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 we are allowed to use our imagination, imagination to dive into Hashem, and we're allowed to imagine God as a father, as a mother, as a thing. Obviously, it's not the it's not an image in itself. It's the feeling that we have when we're a mother, a sister, or a friend. You're allowed to imagine that that thing. Just the same way you're allowed to imagine that you are in, in Yerushalayim when you're done. So Bezat Hashem, we should have our last Tisha B'Av and all the experience, joy, and uh, happy delivery of, uh, of the Bezat Mikdash and this world. And Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.